Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors and another video in our fly tying series. Today we're going to be tying the first paragon that we've done on the channel. I've been having a lot of fun tying these in different variations lately, so we're going to start off with this one. This is, I'm kind of calling this the Black Zebra Paragon just because I don't know what else to call it, and that's pretty much what it looks like. Um, but these are a great dropper fly. They're really fish catching machines, so I think this is a really good one to start with. As you guys know by now, with all of our fly tying videos, we give away a half dozen flies and we're giving away a white dog koozie along with it. So in order to take part in that giveaway, just be a subscriber on this channel, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting us know what kind of things you wanna see. Um, we'll be drawing from the comments on the video and we'll be announcing it in the next fly tying video that we do. At the end of this video, we'll be holding the drawing for the previous fly tying video, which was the Rainbow Warrior. So stick around for the end of that and uh, we'll find out who our winners are. But let's get to tying our first Paradigone, the Black Zebra Paragon. All right, so let's get to tying this Paradigone. Um, I did a fly swap with a guy in the UK and he actually gave me a pattern very similar to this. So I, I really kind of developed it after that. Um, it basically looks like a black zebra midge, right? So I kind of call this the black zebra paradigm, um, for lack of anything else better to call it. So um, one thing about paradigms is they are a different tie than what you guys have seen me tie in most of my nymphs so far. Most of what I tie are buggy nymphs with lots of, you know, dubbing and, and, and fur hanging off and stuff like that. These are going to be very different. This is a very slim body fly that's going to have a hard UV coating on it. Um, and, the, and it's not going to have a ton of weight in it, so we're not going to put any lead wraps in it. It's basically going to go straight from a thread body to the bead. So the reason we do that is th th basically it came from Spain where, where they wanted to get small flies deep. And how were they going to achieve that, right? So normally the buggy flies that I create with all the dubbing and everything on it make them pretty heavy so that they can sink. But when you want a small fly getting down you you can't give it all that bugginess or it'll never get down right so all of those fibers and everything in the fly create resistance in the water and basically keep it from sinking well so this fly is going to have a very thin body it's going to have basically just a thread body and then we're going to coat it with uv resin it's going to give it a hard shell and so there's not going to be any resistance for this fly when it hits the water it's going to want to sink right to the bottom um, so we're not going to put any lead in it. All the weight is going to be in the bead. When you want to change weights, you simply go, go with a bigger bead. Um, we're not going to add lead because we, we really want to keep this a slim body. So um, this particular fly right here, um, it's got a, a wing casing that's drying right now. It's basically just um, it's black, black fingernail polish is all we're using there. So we're going to take this one off. And we're going to come back to this at the end so I can show you guys how to finish the fly. But this is the fly. We're going to take it out of here. We're just going to hang it on this guy over here. And I'm going to load the hook with the bead that we're going to be using today. Now, we are going to be using a size 16 jig hook. Um, right now, this is just a... I use saber hooks because um, I, I get them... Uh, I get a good price on them and, and I get quite a few of them. So they're, they're pretty high quality too. So I, I, I've just been using these a lot. This is a size 16, um, 60 degree barbless jig hook. You know, any, any jig hook is fine here, but I do definitely like the jig hooks. I think they have a better hookup ratio than, than just a straight nymph hook. Okay, so we're gonna start with a 16, size 16 jig hook. Um, the bead that I'm using today, I'm actually gonna recommend that you use something slightly different. Um, this is a tungsten bead, so I definitely wanna recommend a tungsten bead. This is a 764, which is a good size for this. If I wanted to make it a little heavier, I'd go to 1 8. Um, but this is a countersunk bead. This is not a slotted bead. You guys see me a lot of times when I'm tying flies, I don't use the slotted beads because I'm using lead wraps in them and I slide the lead wraps right up into the bead. And so that usually keeps the bead in the perfect position. However, I'm not using lead in, the, in a paragon, right? So I want a thin thread body. And so honestly, I should be using uh, a slotted bead. I just didn't have any slotted beads in this size, in this color. Um, so I have some on order, but I would, I would recommend using a slotted bead for this. Okay. So we are just going to start by putting the thread on. If actually one thing I want to say for anybody who's local to me, um, we have not had a fly shop in the area for quite a while outside of the fly shack, which for me is 45 minutes, probably a little bit longer away. And, you know, I get a lot of my stuff from the fly shack. Um, but there's a new fly shop called black dog. Um, I went and visited these guys 
and got the threads and everything that I needed. So, you know, the Black Dog guys um, are a new shop in Glenville. So, uh, you know, if anybody's interested, definitely go check them out. Talk to the guys, they're pretty awesome guys. Uh, hooked me up with the materials I needed for this. And they do fly tying nights every once in a while, so I'm probably gonna join them for some of that stuff. But anybody local to me in the Capital District, Albany area, we got a new fly shop, so definitely go check them out. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a thread. I'm actually gonna kind of recommend a slightly different thread than the one I'm using again. Um, this is a Vivas, it's a 100 denier. Um, this is a gel spun, it's really slick. It's hard to get started. Once I get started, it's okay. Um, I do prefer, um, I would actually recommend using a UTC Ultra Thread uh, 70 denier. I think the 70 is basically the perfect size for these paradigms. It's um, a little bit smaller. And I just, we're gonna end up using this at the end with our hotspot, but um, I would actually prefer the UTC 70 for the black thread to start. Um, you'll see, um, I struggle a little bit getting this guy started just cause it's so slick. I have to hold it really tight to get it started, but let's go ahead. Um, one of the thing I would say in terms of the threads, I do like the, uh, the denier threads because when you lay them on the hook, they lay flat. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they really flatten out. And that is really going to help you create a nice slim body. Um, if you have a very round thread, like say a uni thread, this is completely not the color that we would use, but if you had like a uni thread and like six or eight odd or something like that, those are gonna be thicker and they're much more round. And so it's gonna be harder to build a really slick tapered body um, with that kind of round thread. You want something that's gonna be able to lay nice and flat, just like this one. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get this guy started right behind the bead. We're just gonna to try to get this guy situated. These guys always wanna slip right at the beginning with this thread. Um, I'm gonna get it started here and I'm gonna clip off my tag, okay? Now we don't wanna put a lot of thread on here and build the body up too quickly because we do wanna keep it fairly slim. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna actually go straight to our tailing material. We're gonna tie our tailing material back in here and so that we're not going back and forth on the shank of the hook too many times with our thread. Okay, so you guys know in a lot of my flies, I tie tailing with um, pheasant tail. For a paragon, I'm not gonna do that. Um, this material is way too big, it's way too fuzzy and webby. It's gonna catch way too much water and keep it from sinking, okay? So um, normal nymphs, it's fine, but with a paragon where I'm not gonna have a ton of weight in the fly, but I still wanna be able to get it down, I don't want that webby material kind of holding me back. So instead, we're gonna be using a Coq de Leon. This is pretty cool stuff, actually. Um, this is, again, straight out of Spain, but the very, very um, fine fibers in there, they look really cool, and they, they make a really good tailing material for these paragons especially. Um, feel free to use these on all your nymphs. A lot of people really like these on their nymphs. All right, so you guys know when I, uh, when I tie with the pheasant tail for my tailing material, I'm typically only using three or four fibers. I'm gonna do the same here because I don't want a lot of fibers hanging off the back and keeping it from being able to sink well. So we're only gonna, we're gonna go pretty sparse here and use three or four fibers of the Coq de Leon. We're gonna try to lay these here and size them so that they're, we have the right distance that we wanna hang off the back here, okay? And I don't want them super long hanging off the back um, because I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want a lot of bugginess to this fly. So we're gonna, we're gonna do right about here. I'm gonna transfer it to my left hand. I'm gonna do a little pinch and pull. And we basically want these guys right off the bot, the back. So if I tip this up, you should be able to see that those fibers are pretty much right off the back. And I'm just gonna do my best to hold these in here. And we're gonna... All right. Lock those guys in. Now that they're in, I'm gonna take wide turns all the way back up to the top, and we're gonna cut these out. And we wanna cut these out as close as we can to the shank of the hook. Okay, good scissors here matter. And if you find that your thread's not laying flat, you can spin it counterclockwise a little bit too. You guys probably can't see it, it's below that, but I um, just wanna try to get it to lay flat. I'm gonna bring this all the way up to the top. And now we're gonna tie in our ribbing material. And for the ribbing material, just using some really small, fine brassy wire. This is just brassy wire and small. You can use like a, uh, you know, just a fine wire here. Okay, so I'm gonna cut off a section of that. The one I had that I was using is getting a little bit small. 
So I am going to cut off, what I usually do is I cut off a pretty decent sized section of this and then I use it to tie many, several flies in a row so they don't have to keep going back and cutting pieces all the time. So because I want to keep a pretty even taper, I don't want to, I don't want a big taper in this thing. I'm actually going to take this wire. Let's see, I'll straighten it out a little bit at the end. I'm going to take this wire. I'm actually going to put the wire up into the hole of the bead. And you can do this whether you have a countersunk bead like I do, or if you had a slotted bead, you could slide it right into the slot. And that's just going to help me hold it in place. And I'm just going to wind that down the length of the hook. I'm basically just looking for consistency, right? Bring that down to where we're going to start wrapping it right about there. Okay, that's going to hang off the back. Now we're basically just going to wrap forward. I want to keep that, I want to keep that thread flat so that it's not binding up. It's not bad. You can build just a very slight taper here. Not much. Um, just a little bit. And you can see my thread, it wasn't laying quite as flat there. Um, you can see a little bit of, I want to make that, I'm going to be really picky. I'm going to be really picky. Let's try to spin it a little bit, see if we can get it to flatten out a little bit more. There, bring it back up. Okay, a little more better taper. All right, we're gonna bring this wire up as gently as we can. We're gonna try to do nice, even wraps with this. And this is basically our nice ribbing. Oh, I got that one a little tight. I didn't like the way that one went. All right, and I'm going to tie it off right in here. Okay, now I am going to helicopter this. I usually don't, but I'm going to in this case. Get it right down close. Sometimes I don't like to helicopter because it kind of hurts the wire as you're doing it. Um, and I'm basically going to quickly put on a, a quick whip finish on this. Sometimes I'll just do a little half hitch with my with my finger, but we are done with the black thread. And so we're gonna tie off the black thread and we are gonna cut this in as close as we can. Okay, now we're gonna switch over to our red thread because we're gonna build a hot spot. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm using the UTC 70 in red. Um, I really, really like this thread. I would highly recommend getting this. I'm basically gonna, I think I'm gonna restock a lot of my threads in exactly this because I really like it. And we're just gonna tie this guy in. Okay, we're gonna, Clip this off again as close as I can. All right, now we want something flashy for this hot spot. Um, what I've done in the past is I've used, I tried this like holographic red stuff. Um, this tinsel is just way too big for these flies. And so if I got it in a much smaller um, size, it might work, um, but I can't use it here. It was what I was trying to use before. I ended up using, I think I got this from the Fly Fish Food guys. I was looking for something really small. And this is, it's called silver metal. I'll, I'll try to find um, all the, the materials that I use. So I always forget to tell you guys this. I'm gonna put all the materials in the description for everything that I'm using. And I'm pretty sure I got this from the Fly Fish Food guy. So I'll see if I can find it on their site and I'll link it down below. But it's a much thinner uh, red material. You can see I've got, it's a little curly, but I've got a, I've got a selection of it here. We're just gonna tie this in. And that's what we're going to use to build our flashy red hotspot. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do the very same thing that I did before, where I'm going to slide that into the bead and attach it here at the bead, and then just bring it a little bit back. All right, and now we're just going to try to build that hotspot with this flared red flashy material. I'm going to try to fill that in. All right, and this is really thin stuff, so not much to it all right and again I'm just gonna lock that in get it out of here get as close as I can and then I'm gonna go straight to a whip finish with this guy and just a really quick probably two turn whip finish just to tie it off I don't want a lot of bulk and let's just get this cleaned up all right so let's get this guy out of here again as close as we can all right, so the fly in terms of tying is done. Oh, did one of those bands fall backwards? I'm gonna push it forward if I can. All right, I had one of those little pieces jump down. Um, I'm not gonna bother retying. I actually kind of like the way it looks, but <laughs> um, 
we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. So normally I'd be putting my, my UV resin on. I am gonna put a little bit of a wing case on. Okay, so this is where we left off the other fly. When you started, I had applied my wing case and it was drying. So I'm just using black nail polish. Um, I don't think you need anything special here, just black nail polish. Um, try to get off a lot of this so that there's not a ton of it. This is a brand new bottle that really wants to soak it in. And basically, I just want to put a little dab right on top here. Right on the fly. And what I'm going to find is that it's going to soak into the hole in the bead. This will happen whether you're using a slotted bead or a countersunk bead. It's going to, it's going to go into the hole of where the bead was. So once it kind of does that, I'm going to try to fill it back in again. So I, what you do is typically you tie a few of these up like this, get, get, your, uh, get your nail polish in there, and then you basically hang them off to the side, let them dry, and then you go back with your UV resin. So I'm gonna hit that a couple more times. I'm gonna clean up the tip there a little bit. Let me see if I can get it right in the holes where I want it. I want it right in there there just like that that's really good right now and you're going to watch it's going to sink in a little bit as it goes along and so basically you're just going to let it dry you're going to work to fill that in try to even it out um, it'll help a little bit with the slotted tungsten bead rather than having the countersunk bead because it's it's got a, a, a narrower area to go in with, with this countersunk bead it's got a bigger area so again another reason i would recommend that slotted bead this is basically done with the tying portion of the fly so i'm basically just going to pull this guy off i'm going to set it somewhere to dry and we're going to go back and hopefully this guy is dry this is one i was working on earlier See how this one dried. Pretty good. So we're going to slide this guy back in here. All right. And this is one I tied earlier. It's basically the same exact fly, except I didn't have the red thing slip, slip down on me. So this one looks a little bit better. Um, it did sink in a little bit more, but that's okay. We're going to fill it with the UV resin. So now we're at the point where we're going to add the UV resin. So, you know, I'm using... Um, UV resin from the fly shack is because the only place that really had it, and these are kind of my boys, um, they always seem to have everything and they're, they're a local shop, as local as I had until the black dog guy showed up. So uh, I tend to buy a lot of stuff from them, but um, the applicator on this isn't so great. It's a little bit harder. And so you can use these little tiny brushes to kind of get into these little areas. Um, you can also use a bodkin, and that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it in here and we're gonna spread it nicely with this bodkin. We do not wanna put a lot on. We're gonna go pretty sparse on this. We can always add more later, but basically I'm just gonna let a little bit of a drop show up. We're gonna to touch it to the fly. All right, set it down, and I'm basically gonna work it into the fly. Okay, I'm gonna put it underneath. I got some here. And we want to make sure that this just kind of flows evenly. There we go. Looking good. Just want it nice and even as we go. So it looks pretty decent. I can add a little bit more later if I want. I'm just going to clean up my bodkin so it doesn't have any UV harden on it. Okay, so we're going to hit the UV resin with a little... Uh, this one's from Loon. It's just a blue light or a UV light. So once we hit that, I'm going to spin it a little bit more. And as I sat there, it wanted to puddle up a little bit. So I'm going to just spread that around just a little bit more. Try to get it more on the body. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit that quick. We're going to spin it and UV it. And there she goes. It's funny when the UV cures, you can really smell it curing. That's probably plenty. I probably got a nice hard body there. Oh yeah, we're good. I might add just a little bit more to the body. I feel those ribs. I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit more. Honestly, you could call this fly done right here. No, no issue whatsoever. It is basically there. Just gonna add a tiny bit more. Work on spinning that around. Just kind of makes it look a little bit more like a cone. That's pretty good. Let's hit it. 
And there we go. UV it up, baby. All right, we got a nice solid body on this guy and we have a completed black zebra paradigm. So um, these are great little flies. Again, I would say if you wanna make them heavier, go to a bigger bead. You do see a lot of people tie these with bigger beads. It almost looks weird because you have this like monster bead on the front and then a thin body, um, but they're, they're pretty cool. It's, it's the way to get them down. So um, how do I fish these? I don't use these as a point fly because they're super light. If you're using paradigons, a lot of times it's hard to really feel what's going on. There's not a ton of weight there unless you're using a really big bead. Um, I typically fish these as a dropper. So I'll usually have a heavier point fly and I'll fish these as a dropper. And let me tell you what, these pick up a lot of fish. Um, they love these little droppers. Um, I went with a size 16. Um, yeah, I see them all different sizes, but a lot of times these are great for like a small, a small fly imitation that you want as the dropper. Um, and so, you know, you'll see them from, I think the average sizes are typically probably 16 to 18 and sometimes 20s and even maybe even smaller. It's a fun fly to tie, honestly, once you start getting into the knack of it. The one thing I would say is as you're tying them, keep them thin. Don't put too many wraps on. They're really meant to be a thin bodied fly. Um, I've really kind of enjoyed learning how to tie these and I'm excited to tie a whole bunch more of these in different colors. Um, you know, I, I, this is how you tie a paradigm, but you can, you can do all sorts of different colors and everything like that, different materials, um, some flashy materials. I was playing around with some, maybe I'll show you guys some pictures of those, um, really flashy kind of materials. Let's see if you can hold this up and see it or not, but flashy materials with a hotspot, really kind of cool stuff. But, um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one and that you can tie some and be successful with them. But for now, let's get to the drawing for the last fly tying video we did, which was the Rainbow Warrior. All right, so let's do the drawing for the Rainbow Warriors. Uh, again, the winner is going to win six Rainbow Warriors and a white dog koozie. And we had 151 participants, which is awesome. Uh, I didn't give you guys hardly anywhere near as much time as I usually do for these drawings, um, just because we're doing another video fairly quickly here. But we still had 151 participants, so thank you everybody for all the support and commenting. I read all these comments um, and I try to respond to as many as I can. But let's go ahead um, and do the drawing for the Rainbow Warriors and the White Dog Koozie, and here we go. All right, the winner of the Rainbow Warriors and the Koozie is Kurt Baker, nice job on the Rainbow Warrior, learning a lot from your videos. Keep up the good work. Uh, thank you, Kurt, and everybody else for supporting, and congratulations for winning the flies and the white dog koozie. I'll be in touch with you, and um, we'll get those flies and the koozie off to you soon. All right, well, congratulations to the winner of the Rainbow Warriors and the white dog koozie. Uh, I'll have that stuff together and sent on its way to you soon. And uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's our first pair to go, and I think we're going to be doing a few more. I got some pretty cool stuff planned, so hopefully you'll join us for all of that and all of the videos that we'll be doing. You know, again, we, we have a lot coming, in, whether it's fly tying, whether it's in the urine nymphing series, or whether it's just in our adventure stuff that we have planned for this year. So hope you guys will join us for everything, and we will see you guys very soon.